it's a compilation video of a number of things put together by DJ academics. The state does not intend to offer up those portions that do not include um, the Little Wayne threat or the Little Wayne uh, statement itself. Um, so the, the first 43 seconds, I'd argue it's not the first 43 seconds, I can actually play for the court um, the portion that we intend to introduce and the videos that we intend to introduce. But Ms. Detective Raisi, during his investigation of the Little Wayne bus shooting, found not only this, but other similar videos that don't contain DJ Academics' breakdown of what the relationship is. Okay. Because the rest of it is DJ Academics' breakdown um, of what the relationship is, and the rest of it contains self-serving statements, I would argue, by Defendant Jeffrey Williams that were not shot at the same time as the Lil Wayne statements at the concert. Um, Who's DJ shot. Academics? A person who was posting on social media um, that was chronicling, a blogger of sorts that was chronicling the relationship between... So is he coming, to, is she coming to testify? So we're not, no, DJ Academics is not, and we're not, again... How are you going to introduce this particular, these particular videos? Because Detective Raisi um, was able to pull uh, videos, this one and others, off of relevant party sites. For instance, Lil Wayne, Dwayne Carter, posted certain things on his Twitter site. So um, we will introduce them, show the relevant necessary foundations for their admissibility through Detective Raisi, show the identifying factors, show whose site it was, show where he accessed it, and then introduce it um, as, again, intrinsic evidence of the relationship between Jeffrey Williams and Dwayne Carter. Also, we, just to give you um, additional information about that type of evidence, there is a um, video that we have included on our slide that is a, a series of posts on Lil Wayne's site, young th dot 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 who, um, and then he goes on, that was posted on April the 1st, 2015. Uh, for the record, I don't like to start beef when these artists like Young Thug approach me, they get smoked. That's um, Lil Wayne's posting. Um, he then, that was on April the 1st, 2015. And these are all things that occurred before we get to the April the 26th shooting of Lil Wayne's bus. Additionally, Your Honor, as I said earlier, there, there's a video of the defendant Jeffrey Williams talking into the camera that he posted um, saying that he was going to um, drop his album on a certain date and that his first showing, his first appearance with that particular album was going to be in Lil Wayne's hometown of Holly Grove, Louisiana. And um, that they were going to be bringing those, as he called it, those dicks. And then he pans to the back of the people behind him. And Jimmy Winfrey is one of the people standing there with an assault rifle. And there are other people in that video of Defendant Williams with guns as well. So at the time, on the date, rather, that Little Wayne made an appearance at the compound, Defendant Williams was in Little Wayne's hometown of Holly Grove, Louisiana, um, apparently getting booed on stage. So this video, again, is intrinsic evidence of the state of the parties, state of the people who are involved in this case, one of the defendants and one of the victims. Okay. We, so can, play, we can play that at the court's pleasure, right. for the court. Okay. Um, since Mr. Steele in his motion has also referenced our, the Supreme Court's recent pronouncing in Baker, um, Case number CR 23 Alpha 0860 decided March the 5th of this year. Um, and 403, what's the, what, is there any distinction between that uh, in, in this particular 
what you're trying to elicit or establish? There he is, Judge. Um, that actually, Baker, the Baker ruling would have no impact on this evidence. And why? Because this particular um, video that we are introducing is of a victim in this case, Dwayne Carter, and it is evidence of the relationship between him and a defendant in this case, as opposed to in Baker, the video was simply shown apparently for the prejudicial impact it would have on the jury. It didn't have any, there was no nexus, there's no relationship between the alleged murder in Baker and the video of the defendant with a gun or assault rifle, whatever it was, in Baker. There was literally no connection. It was, they, they argued, and on top of it, the prosecutor kept referencing the video as proof of his violent nature, his propensity to do certain things with guns. This is not that type of situation where there's not even a connection. It's not offered to show anyone's character. It's offered as evidence of the relationship between the aggrieved and the accused. Okay. All right. Why would you be introducing the entirety of the video um, under the rule of completeness? Well, we have, again, multiple videos capturing Little Wayne's pronouncements at the concert. So we would not be introducing the one where DJ Academics makes a compilation video because under the rule of completeness, um, the compilation video would not, it, it contains... Who difference. made the compilation video? DJ Academics. And, and because, where did he get these particular sources? What's his source document of these particular, of, of his compilation? Public sites online. He, gra he grabs <clears throat> snippets from online. And then in the middle of it, he also has his own commentary, oh. if you will, written. Uh, as part of, are you introduced are you trying to seek some of that com, uh, that commentary no what we're putting in the only thing that the state intends to tender is the portion of that video pertaining to what little Wayne says about defendant Jeffrey Williams and Carter six and why people should not buy Jeffrey Williams music should not listen to it because if you're a Little Wayne fan, you know that that's an insult to Little Wayne. All right. And we can. All right. Let me let me that. before it's played. Uh, let me let me give Mr. Steele an opportunity to uh, be heard on that issue. Yes, Your Honor. Hello, Your Honor. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Um, Your Honor, a few things. There's a lot of talk, but I think I got it um, to address to the court. First of all, you already ruled on motion limiting number 49. That's why it's 100 something pages. I attached the entire exhibit. The state said that they just gave us the exhibit. They were not um, going to tender it. They might they might use some of the no in some of the things that are that are referenced therein if the foundation can be laid. No, you excluded it all. It's all about operation planners. They have um, um, it's, it's their theory of the case, basically, and you excluded it all already. In motion, if I need to say anything more, I will, but that was your ruling. In motion, yeah, I, I did rule upon I did, and they may not even be using it, so, yeah, they may not use that anyway, so. Well, I would hope not if you ruled it out. Yeah. Uh, motion limit number 48 is what you've been referring to. Yes. And the state said, specifically, there's several things, so we got a compilation of exhibits and slides that the state wants to use in the upcoming future of our trial. And I went through everything. Some things I couldn't open. I'd let the state know. Um, so I'm still waiting on that. But everything I did see I, that I had an objection to, I raised an objection specifically. The, the part that you're talking about, all of the um, statements of a non-witness, Mr. I was told that Mr. Dwayne Carter, he's a performer known as Lil Wayne, he is not coming to testify. He's on the state's witness list. I asked if he's coming. They said no. They have no intention of calling him. So he's not a non-witness. 
So all of his statements are out-of-court statements. The prosecution says it's not hearsay because it's not being used for the truth of matter asserted, yet they say it is being used for the truth of matter asserted to show a relationship, and it's intrinsically intertwined. So you can't have it both ways. If it's not for the truth of matter asserted, then you don't care what he says, or it's a lie. But they're saying, no, it's actually an argument that Lil Wayne is angry at Jeffrey Williams, a performer known as Young Thug. So the first issue I ask the court is I believe it's being used for the truth of matter asserted. If it's not being used for the truth of matter asserted, it shouldn't come in because then it doesn't show any relationship. It's a falsity. The second part is this. These are, from what I have on the slides, these are little segments. It's clear that Lil Wayne is doing something. He's performing in front of audiences, and he's making statements. I have no idea. I would tell you if I could get it. I have no idea what was said before or after those statements. I don't know if it was said in jest. I don't know if it's said to gain notoriety. As the court heard from experts who were qualified and an expert who was qualified to come in and talk about rap culture and the business in order to promote each other, entertainers will get into arguments or do things together. They will promote their own concerts. They will promote their own albums. They will promote other people's concerts and other people's albums. Or they will get into an argument. They call it a rap battle. It's actually in one of the slides that you were told, the blogger. He talks about this is a rap battle. So they do it to gain notoriety for both of the artists. Without Lil Wayne coming in and testifying, we don't really know why he is saying these things. In addition to that, as I said, these are small snippets of a bigger case, of a bigger statement. So to me, having a detective say I found this on the Internet is like what I did. And I disagree with your ruling, respectfully. But when I wanted Trontavious Stevens to identify the song by Rich Gang, and you told me, yes, it's relevant because the state is saying that Rich Gang is wearing red and they're holding up gang signs, and here you are doing a song. The jurors can weigh it out whether it's just for show or not. But you have the wrong witness. Because you said, how does he know if it's on the Internet, if anything is true or not true or changed? So I didn't like that ruling, but you stuck that ruling hard. And therefore, they need somebody to properly authenticate it, not just a person. Like I had Trontavious Stevens. They had Detective Racy coming in to say I saw this on the Internet. So I think I've addressed everything that the court said except one. I don't know if Lil Wayne posts. There are a lot of people. These entertainers are really busy, especially when you get to a certain level. They have people controlling their social media. So I don't know who posted it, why it was posted. Was it posted with the permission of Lil Wayne or not? Maybe it's express permission. Maybe it's implied. But without having somebody say, yeah, I was there. I know what he said. That is accurate. And this is what it meant. I'm sticking to my really hearsay objection and no foundation. All right. 